Hi everyone, this video is about thyroid hormones. Your thyroid hormones are produced by the thyroid gland. But aside from the thyroid gland, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland also play important functions in the production of your thyroid hormones. Hypothalamus produces the TRH or thyroidopin releasing hormone which stimulates the pituitary gland to produce TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to produce and secrete T4 and T3. T4 can then be converted in the peripheral tissues to T3 in what we call peripheral conversion. Now this HPT axis is controlled by negative feedback. This means that if you have increased levels of T4 and T3, this will send signals to the hypothalamus as well as the pituitary to decrease their secretions, thereby maintaining normal levels of T4 and T3. On the other hand, if you have decreased levels of T4 and T3, negative feedback is removed and the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland begin secreting high levels of TRH and TSH to push the thyroid gland to produce T4 and T3. This is an overview of thyroid hormone synthesis. Thyroid hormone synthesis happens in the follicular cells of the thyroid gland. The follicular cells of the thyroid gland uh, absorb iodine from the blood and this iodine through the enzyme thyroid peroxidase is converted from its iodide form to its uh, elemental iodine form. This iodine again through the action of the enzyme thyroid peroxidase undergoes organification wherein iodine is combined with tyrosine to form MIT or DIT. MIT means monoiodotyrosine tyrosine, DIT means diiodotyrosine. MIT and DIT can now undergo the process of coupling. In coupling, MIT and DIT combine together to form T3, whereas two DIT molecules can combine together to form T4. T3 and T4 are then stored in the thyroid gland. Once they are needed, uh, they are released from the thyroid gland through the process of endocytosis. Thyroid hormones require thyroid hormone binding proteins for them to circulate. The major transport protein for T3 and T4 is thyroxine binding globulin. T4 is almost completely bound to proteins, whereas T3 has weaker attachment to proteins. So more T3 is free in circulation. T3 is more potent. The other uh, binding protein for thyroid hormones would be thyroxine binding prealbumin or prealbumin or transthyretin. And serum albumin can also function as a thyroid hormone binding protein. Let us now talk about the laboratory values that we see in hyperthyroidism as well as in hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism can be classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary. Primary hyperthyroidism results from uh, increased production of T4 and T3 in the thyroid gland itself. In secondary hyperthyroidism, the pathology is found in the pituitary gland, wherein the pituitary produces high levels of TSH, stimulating the, t uh, the production of more T3 and T4 from the thyroid gland. When you say tertiary hyperthyroidism, the pathology is found in the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus produces high levels of TRH, which stimulates high productions of TSH, which then stimulates high productions of T3 and T4. So for us to differentiate between these various types of hyperthyroidism, we look at the thyroid profile of the patient. So as you can see here, in primary hyperthyroidism, T4 and T3 are increased, but TSH and TRH are decreased. This is because of negative feedback. In secondary hyperthyroidism, TSH is increased, thus T3 and T4 are increased. Again, remember, in secondary hyperthyroidism, the problem is in the pituitary. TRH is decreased since your hypothalamus is normal and its normal response to an elevation of T4 and T3 will be to decrease TRH through negative feedback. In tertiary hyperthyroidism, TRH is increased, thus TSH is increased, thus T3 and T4 are increased. 
So by looking at the entire thyroid profile of the patient, we are able to differentiate between the various types of hyperthyroidism. Now T3 uptake is directly proportional to T4 and T3. So since your T4 and T3 are increased in all types of hyperthyroidism, you also expect the T3 uptake to, inc to be increased in all types of hyperthyroidism. Of course, there are some exceptions. Now, for hypothyroidism, the same classification is used. You have primary, secondary, and tertiary hypothyroidism. In primary hypothyroidism, the problem is in the thyroid gland itself. In secondary, the problem would be in the pituitary, whereas in tertiary, the problem would be in the hypothalamus. Now, in primary hypothyroidism, the thyroid glands under secrete T4 and T3. TSH and TRH would be increased because of negative feedback. In secondary hypothyroidism, TSH is decreased. Thus, T4 and T3 are, are also decreased as a result. TRH is increased because of negative feedback. In tertiary hypothyroidism, TRH is decreased. Thus, TSH is decreased. Thus, T3 and T4 are also decreased. Now, T3 uptake is again directly proportional to T4 and T3, so we expect the T3 uptake in all types of hypothyroidism to be decreased. Let us talk about some clinical conditions related to the thyroid gland. The first one is Graves' disease. Graves' disease is the most common cause of hyperthyroidism. It is an autoimmune disorder wherein there is autoantibody production this autoantibody stimulates the TSH receptor, thus causing an increase in the synthesis and release of your thyroid hormones. So clinical features include hyperthyroidism as well as its signs and symptoms, diffuse goiter or enlargement of the thyroid gland, and exophthalmos or bulging of the eyes. There could also be pretibial myxedema. Another condition related to the thyroid gland is your Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This is the most common cause of hypothyroidism in regions where iodine levels are adequate. This is also an autoimmune condition wherein, wherein there is autoimmune destruction of the thyroid gland. We could see antithyroglobulin and antithyroperoxidase antibodies in some of these patients. And this is associated with the presence of HLA-DR5. Now, lastly is cretinism. Cretinism is hypothyroidism in neonates and infants. The thyroid hormones play an important role in the mental development and physical development of neonates as well as infants. So with the deficiency of thyroid hormone among the neonates and infants, we could see various uh, manifestations. It is characterized by mental retardation, short stature with skeletal abnormalities, coarse facial features, and large tongue and umbilical hernia. So some causes include maternal hypothyroidism during early pregnancy. This is why it is important for mothers who are pregnant to be supplemented with iodine. Thyroid agenesis or the failure of the thyroid glands to develop. Iodine deficiency as well as this hormonogenetic goiter or congenital defect in thyroid hormone production. This most commonly involves the enzyme thyroid peroxidase. So in this illustration, you have here uh, uh, the manifestations of cretinism, wherein there are coarse facial features, a protuberant tongue due to the enlargement of the tongue, umbilical hernia due to the enlargement of the organs, and of course muscle weakness and mental retardation.